Hey guys, Ronan here. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about what I see as a recruiter, the difference between real drivers and fake drivers. So again, this is just my opinion. Some of you are going to agree with me, other people are gonna be completely disagreeing with me, but what I see as a recruiter, the difference between real drivers and fake drivers. So we're gonna break this video down into two parts. First, I'm gonna talk about the real drivers that I see, and then we're going to talk about what I believe is fake drivers or drivers who are not as good as the real drivers and a lot of it has to do with the way they come into the industry and the way they come here and work. So let's talk a little bit about the real drivers. So real drivers, they come into the industry and they make a career choice. So this is what they want to do for a living. They, they go and get their AZ license from a reputable and accredited school. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So there's a lot of schools out there that I see that really should not have the licenses to do what they're doing. They pump these drivers in and they pump them out. And a lot of the time, the drivers that come out of these schools, they're really not ready and not close to be ready to start working. When I see drivers coming out of an accredited school or a more reputable school, they're different types of drivers. It's drivers that have invested in the schooling. It's usually a lot longer the schooling for these accredited schools or these reputable schools. You know, drivers that come into the industry, you know, once they get their AZ license, it doesn't mean anything, right? Now you need to go out there and find a job. So I see that the real drivers that wanna get into this industry as a career, they're not, right off the get-go, they're not looking for the highest paying company. They're not looking for the money. What's on the forefront of their mind is the knowledge and the experience. And that really is what should be on the forefront of your mind. Um, you really should be looking for a company that's going to give you the experience that's going to get you ready for the real road out there you know there is no such thing as a training program for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks you think you're gonna go into a company and after four weeks you're gonna become a truck driver well that's not the way it works and if you talk to any real driver out there they're gonna tell you that it's years and years of experience and knowledge and being in certain situations that have got them to the situation where they are today another thing I see about uh, a real truck driver is um, they constantly want to learn and be better at what they do so even if they have three years, four years, five years on their belt, they still want to challenge themselves to learn more. So that, you know, some drivers, I see that the repetitiveness kind of gets to them and then they start wanting to do flatbeds or they, they want to get into tankers or they want to get into more higher paying jobs like uh, over dimensional work. So they're constantly wanting to re-educate themselves. They constantly want to better themselves and they want to better this industry. Now, the second part of the video that I said that we're going to talk about is the uh, fake drivers, the drivers that really should not be on the road. I've had interviews with so many drivers that say on their resume they have two years, or even if they say they have a year and a half or a year and eight months, you know, depending on our situation, I will entertain those applicants. But when we do the road test for them, man, I have no idea where they got their license from. You know, and I ask them about it, where did you get your license? Sometimes I, I'd write down names. I really don't want to mention any names um, in the video but there really are a lot of places out there um, you know training schools out there especially in the GTA that should not have the ability to train drivers because they come out of those schools even though they have an AZ license but they, they just they don't know how to drive. That's what the difference is between going to a reputable school versus a school. Um, I hear that price makes a big difference. I mean, if you have a company or if you have a school that's charging you $7,000 versus a school that's gonna cost you $9,000, yes, you know, I understand paying that extra $2,000 is hard, uh, but you really need to see what you're getting and the kind of students that graduate from uh, the reputable schools are completely different than the ones that graduate from the not so reputable schools. So unfortunately in the GTA we have a lot of these driving schools that are not reputable and the drivers that come out of there are completely different. You know another quality of a fake driver that I see is you know I get a lot of applicants that are working at a, a, a trucking company and they have literally seven or eight months experience and I stumble upon the resume and just for the heck of it you know I'll pick up the phone and I say why are you looking for another job? And, you know, he's getting paid currently, you know, 50 cents per mile and we pay 55 cents per mile or he's getting paid 60 and we pay 65 cents per mile. So they're really just in it for a quick buck. And I know that the second that a driver like that, I mean, he only has six months experience. He's making 50 or 60 cents per mile. You know, give yourself the time to learn. And all of a sudden he's already looking for another job. And I know that once if, I, if we do recruit somebody like that, it's just a matter of time that he'd be making 60, 65 and he'll leave you for, you know, another three or four cents. So that's what I 
call fake drivers, drivers that are in it just for the money. You know, something happened in their lives that they just stumbled upon. Oh, they heard that, you know, truck drivers make a really good living in Canada. You know, let's just get into this industry just for the money. So they're not really here to learn. They're not really here to better themselves. They're not really here to become good drivers. They're just here for the money and they will sell you for three or four cents. And it's just a matter of time until somebody else recruits them, pay them two or three cents more and they will leave you to, for another company. Another quality is uh, drivers that have bad work ethics. So right away when I recruit a driver, I'll look at their CVR and driver abstract and I'll see that they have, you know, violations, light not working, you know, uh, deflated tire. Um, they got they got caught at the scale for uh, brake light not working, uh, cracked windshield. I mean, all these things, these minor violations. And I say to myself, wow, you know, like, do you ever do your PTI and don't drive with defective equipment? I mean, it's a very plain and simple. Why in the world would you drive with a deflated tire? Why would you drive with a brake light not working or a marker light not working? That's just, you know, I do get a lot of responses that, you know, the, the, the company that I work for, they would force me to drive in these situations. Well, you know what? It's your driver's license. It's, it's me as a recruiter now that's looking at you and I feel like you don't do a PTI and you won't stand up for a company that's going to tell you to do illegal stuff. I'm looking more for drivers that are gonna say no I'm not gonna drive with defective equipment either fix it or you know or I'm, I'm out of here and and those are the kind of drivers that I stumble a lot upon and I prefer to hire those kind of drivers you know drivers that are gonna stand up and say this is my license this is my livelihood my family's at stake there's people on the roads and it's, it's a safety in our highways that I'm not willing to put anybody in jeopardy I will look for a different job because I refuse to do these things and those are the kind of drivers that I like to see I like to see the drivers drivers that are going to stand up and say, no, I'm not going to do that. It's defective equipment. I will not run over my hours. I respect those kind of drivers a lot more. So I want to talk a little bit. I get a lot of emails on why we do not recruit new drivers here at our company. And the reason we don't recruit new drivers is because number one, the insurance uh, does not allow for anybody to come into the industry without two years of experience. Our insurance does not allow it. So I cannot just take a newly licensed driver and put him into a truck. Um, the second reason why we don't hire brand new drivers is because you guys are a lot more likely to have collisions. So there's been stats, insurance companies have put out stats that a newly licensed driver is, I think, 10 or 20 or 30 times more likely to get into an accident than a driver with two or three years of experience. The third thing is violation rates. So a newly licensed driver is a lot more likely to get violations when pulled into the scale than a driver with two or three years uh, of experience. Um, another reason why we do not recruit new drivers because damages um, you know fender benders in the yard you know whether it's to the truck uh, damages to the trailer damages at uh, you know the receivers the shippers the grass um, you know there's there's a lot of damages that come along and it's a learning curve and it really isn't the driver's fault it's just a learning curve freight claims are a lot more likely to happen with newly licensed drivers than with drivers with two three years under their belt and then the last thing a big big reason why we here do not recruit newly licensed drivers is because it costs a fortune to train newly licensed drivers the amount of effort and money that you're putting into training a newly licensed driver and it, it is unfortunate but you know the turnaround rate today with drivers is not what it used to be 10 and 15 years ago drivers are more likely to you know get trained and then leave to go elsewhere so therefore we we just don't recruit new drivers into our company there are a lot of good companies out there that do recruit new drivers but I get so many emails about recruiting new drivers and I just wanted to put it out there that those are the reasons why we do not recruit brand new drivers. Now I'm going to get into a little bit about the LMIA programs and the trucking programs that we have here. The government of Canada allows trucking companies to bring foreigners if you have a shortage and a lot of trucking companies can prove that they have a shortage because they increase their fleet size and at an abnormal rate. They send an application to the government to be able to bring foreigners into this country through this LMIA program or through a trucking program. The system is so bad. I can't even, you know, there's no words to describe how bad the system is. You know, we have sent in an application once ourselves and, you know, they did a horrible job on checking who our company is. Forget about other companies out there. I mean, I went through the process, step-by-step -step process, and maybe I should put out a video, you know, on how we got our LMIA and what kind of candidates are coming through the doors. I mean, the whole point of the system is to be able to recruit foreign drivers into Canada and what's happening is that nobody checked their actual references that they were truck drivers back home 
So here we are getting a flood of candidates that are nowhere near the industry of trucking. You know, so a driver that drove back home 60, 70 foot with a, a truck and a trailer, you know, is more likely to have the experience and is a lot more trainable than somebody who's never driven in their lives. Now I've seen myself, I've seen so many people come or send an application that have never driven back home. And when you put them into a road test situation or they lied in their resume, and when you actually put them in a road test, they don't know anything. So I understand the bigger companies, the ones that have a safety and compliance department, the ones that have, you know, a really good safety score. Yes, give them the ability to bring in truck drivers from other countries. The companies that have a bad record, the companies that have horrible record, the companies that are, that are not doing everything that, the way that they're supposed to be doing, nobody's monitoring that. And that's just, you know, a, a recipe for um, destruction, a recipe for failure. Again, so the reason why I made this video is I wanted to, first of all, let people know, you know, what we as recruiters are looking for between, you know, a good driver or a not so good driver, or what we look for. If you are enjoying these videos, give it a thumbs up, put a comment down below. If you want me to talk about something in my next video, and if you're not subscribed to our channel, the only way we can make a difference is if we unite and we all get together um, and then we can start making change. I hope you subscribe to the channel. I'm Ronan and I'll catch you in the next one.